So thinking about living things and their environments, um, there are many different sorts of habitats, different sorts of um, places where living things can exist on the earth. And we like to talk about these in terms of biomes. We use this word biomes. There are many different biomes on the earth. They are all interconnected though. They're all interconnected by the, the global water cycle that takes place. Um, also nutrient cycles exist that connect all these different biomes. Let's just take a look at this picture to think about the water cycle. So for example, um, let's just start right here in the ocean. So the ocean is a huge body of water and evaporation takes place from that body of water. So water evaporates, ends up forming a cloud and then notice the sunshine is here. The sun is shining on the earth and that ends up leading to temperature differences which helps to drive clouds to move. So this cloud that just formed, um, it is going to end up moving inland. And as it does that, and notice when it starts to get close to these mountains, um, it will eventually rain. If the water concentration up here is high enough, then we'll start getting some rain. So that's precipitation. The water travels back down. Um, now we're on the land. So bi different biome than where we started. We started in the water. Now we're on the land. Same water, right? So uh, rainfall occurs. Some of that water will soak into the ground and some of it may collect on the surface um, and end up leading back into the ocean. The water will flow back into the sea um, and then we're right back where we started. So that's the water cycle. Um, this is helping to connect all of these different biomes together. So what we're going to do next is just take a look at many different examples of biomes and the goal is to familiarize you with different types of biomes. This is um, very much at the heart of ecology, thinking about these different habitats and places that living things can exist and how living things interact with their habitats. Um, we just want to sort of paint that picture here. We're going to take a look at many different examples of biomes. First up, let's start with the freshwater biomes. Examples of these would include things like lakes and ponds, bodies of water that are holding still, they're standing bodies of water. Um, other freshwater biomes would include things like rivers and streams. So in that, in that case, the water is moving, it's not holding still. We could also have things like wetlands. Wetlands are biomes that connect um, aquatic habitats with terrestrial habitats. So it's kind of like at the interface of those two. Here's a picture of a wetland right here. Okay, so a few different types of freshwater biomes. Let's take a look at marine biomes. So other sorts of aquatic biomes. Marine, um, marine water is very salty. So very much a different biome, um, even though it's still aquatic. And marine biomes, we can categorize them based on location in the ocean. So let's just list out a few of these. The benthic realm, this word is referring to um, the sea floor. So we can follow along, um, check out the picture over here. The benthic realm is just whatever is on the sea floor. We could be in shallow waters, we could be in deep waters. Um, there are going to be things that, that live on that floor specifically. Uh, we could talk about the pelagic realm. The pelagic realm is the rest of the ocean. So it's the open water. Instead of thinking about the floor, it's, it's the rest of the ocean. So the open water would be the benthic realm, the, sorry, the pelagic realm. And then um, we can split the pelagic realm up into a couple of different zones. So near the surface of the water, we have what's called the photic zone. It's so named because this is the area where photons can penetrate to. to. So this is a region where photosynthesis can take place. There are phytoplankton, um, there are algae, and they hang out there near the surface where they can photosynthesize. This also includes um, regions where, where coral reefs would be at if we're talking about tropical waters. Um, the photic zone is where coral reefs would be located. And then, um, just to finish this out, if we go deeper, deeper than the photic zone, then we're talking about the aphotic zone. So again, an A in front of a word generally means not photic. So this is a region where light does not make it to. This is generally at depths greater than 200 meters. Um, there's not very much light that can 
can penetrate further than that. And there are a lot of unusual living, well to us they're unusual, living things that exist in the aphotic zone. A good example is the angler fish. I'll show you a picture um, coming up here shortly. Other sorts of marine biomes um, include transition areas. So for example, the intertidal zone, that's just specifically where the ocean meets the land up here. And then an estuary, that's a transition from a river to an ocean. The river flows into the ocean and the transition point is called an estuary. So living things in marine biomes, there's a huge amount of diversity in marine biomes. Um, just, to, to, just to sort of bring a few to mind here, so this is showing th those different zones. We've got the photic zone up here near the top. Again, we've got photosynthesizing organisms up here at the top. If we go deeper um, into the aphotic zone, we have things that do not photosynthesize. So these are heterotrophic organisms. A lot of them feed on sort of the, the debris that falls from up here in the photic zone. Um, they also, in some cases, eat each other. So um, let's see here, going down even deeper where there's no light whatsoever, we have, uh, so, Usually they, they look unusual to us just because we don't see them very often. But there are things like anglerfish. And if you've never seen an anglerfish, let me just show you a picture. This is an anglerfish. It has a lure on the end. This is, um, so this is the fish and this thing coming off of its nose area. This is something that bioluminesces. It glows a little bit in the dark. And so that's very, um, it's a very interesting thing to to small organisms that exist down here. Um, this is literally acting like like a fishing lure. Um, so small organisms will make their way over to that, kind of trying to investigate it. What is that? And then the fish just eats it. Um, so that's how it catches catches its prey. Terrestrial biomes. Terrestrial biomes. There are many different types of terrestrial biomes too, and the difference between them is um, determined by climate. So what do we mean by climate? Different sorts of climates exist due to uneven heating of the earth. So if the sun heated all of the different surfaces equally, um, pretty much the earth would all be, the terrestrial um, the land parts of the earth would all be pretty consistent. They would look very similar. But the fact that we have uneven heating ends up leading to a lot of differences. So uneven heating, um, the sun shines most directly on the equator, on average, and off, um, off to the sides of that we have more temperate zones, so to the north and to the south of the equator we have more temperate zones, and um, the, there are a number of differences between these two, but one of the big differences is just the moisture. Um, so in the tropics, this is where uh, the moisture evaporation happens very readily and also there is a lot of, of rainfall um, in many cases. Off to, to the sides here in the temperate zones, the air tends to be drier and so that ends up leading to a different sort of habitat. So each terrestrial biome is categorized according to uh, basically the plants that grow there. So these different amounts of rainfall and different temperatures, that dictates which plants can grow. And the terrestrial biomes are mapped out very nicely right here. Here are the different examples of terrestrial biomes, um, at least the major ones. And you can see in some of these areas, actually we're in a good spot to look at this, in some of these areas um, there are a number of different biomes that sort of all converge. So it, sometimes the boundary between these different biomes is not real clear. It's not as clear cut as talking about like a marine biome versus a versus terrestrial. Um, if we're looking on the land, uh, the, sometimes the, the lines between these do blur together. Just want to acknowledge that up front. So let's take a look. I'm going to show you some pictures. I would like for you to see these pictures that ca that characterize some of these different biomes. We're going to start with the tropical forests. So if you just check out the key here, where are the tropical forests? Well, they're between the tropics, so around the equator. Um, so this light green color, all of these are, tr are categorized as tropical forests. So tropical forests, here's what they might look like. There's a lot of rainfall. Precipitation is very high in these regions. These are equatorial regions. They tend to have warm temperatures. 
makes sense if you think back to the sunshine, right? The sun is shining most directly on the equator, so it's going to be warm there. And there's lots of rainfall. Um, the, the length of the days is pretty consistent year-round. tends to be around 11 to 12 hours long year-round for daylight. And um, yeah, that's the rainforest. Let's take a look at the next one on our list, the savanna. Savanna, very different. So when you think of savanna, probably something like this comes to mind. There are lots of large grazing mammals that live here, and their predators live here too. Um, there are also a lot of plant-eating insects, so things like ants and termites. Um, one, of, one thing that is very important in the savanna for helping to, to shape this sort of landscape is actually fire. Fire is very relevant in the savanna. The fire could be caused by lightning or it could be caused by human activity. Um, in either case, it ends up being an important abiotic factor, drives living things to, to move. Right, so that's the savanna. The deserts are the driest of all of the biomes, and they can be very hot or they can be fairly cold. It kind of depends on where they're at, where we're talking about on the earth. Um, so quite a bit of variety actually with deserts. The thing that they all have in common is very low precipitation, so not much rainfall at all. They, again, this is the driest of all of the biomes. Um, so in terms of vegetation, the plants that grow here tend to be good at storing water. Cactuses are very good at, cacti are very good at storing water. Um, as far as wildlife goes, lots of snakes and lizards, uh, rodents that eat seeds, and arthropods are very prevalent in the desert. Chaparral. Chaparral is beautiful. Chaparral exists near coasts. Um, this is something that results, this sort of uh, biome results due to cool ocean currents moving inland, um, so circulating offshore. And in the end, what this produces is hot, dry summers and mild, rainy winters. Does that sound familiar? So Chaparral, uh, we're fairly fairly close to the coast right here where we are at, and um, chaparral is not too far away from us. So um, mainly this exists in the coastal areas of California. It also exists around the Mediterranean. I don't know if you can see that on this picture, but there's lots of chaparral around the Mediterranean Sea. Periodically there are fires that sweep through chaparral, fires caused by lightning, and in fact some of the plants that live here they produce seeds that are only uh, capable of germinating after they've been exposed to really high temperatures, like what you get in a hot fire. So in this biome, the fire actually facilitates um, the growth of new plants in those cases. Kind of interesting. Temperate grassland, mostly treeless, right? When you look at this picture, not many trees grow here. Um, so this is another sort of landscape that, that looks familiar to us. In North America, we have a lot of temperate grassland, and it's pretty common to have droughts. Precipitation is low, um, so frequent droughts are common. Periodically, there are fires. This covers a lot of central North America. And as far as wildlife goes, there are lots of grazers that exist in the temperate grasslands. So lots of bison, pronghorn sheep, if we're talking about North America, um, wild horses and sheep, if we're talking about Asia. And then in Australia, we have kangaroos that live in grasslands. Broadleaf forests, temperate broadleaf forests. These are beautiful forests. We don't have them where we are at, uh, but we do have them back east in the United States. Temperate broadleaf forests, they're very dense, uh, very dense growth. Deciduous trees grow in these forests. Deciduous trees are trees that drop their leaves uh, before winter. And in this biome, there are a lot of invertebrates that live in the soil and also just under the leaf litter that all of these trees produce. So in the fall, they drop their leaves. That provides a nice um, habitat for a lot of bugs and a lot of invertebrates to live. There are a lot of mammals that, that hibernate during the winter in these biomes. 
Um, what else? There are birds that migrate through. They migrate to warmer climates in the winter, but they live here at other times of the year. And um, another, another good thing, another interesting note about these types of forests is they tend to be pretty robust. So there are a number of these that have been cleared in the past, um, cleared either for agricultural development or just um, harvested for lumber. And they do a pretty good job of coming back over time. So we've seen a few examples of this um, areas where the forest is growing back if, if the land has not been developed for years. So that's a kind of a neat thing. Moving on to a colder climate, the Arctic tundra. The tundra is characterized by uh, permafrost. So if you look in the map up here, it, this occurs, it's the light purple. Um, permafrost, what is permafrost? This is soil, subsoil that is permanently frozen. Um, so all year round it stays frozen and that means we must be pretty cold in these regions, very much um, characterized by cold temperatures, high winds as well, and notice this one, not much precipitation. So it's cold and it's also dry, not much precipitation. Um, you can see in the picture here there are a lot of small shrubs that grow, lots of grasses, mosses and lichens also grow in this region. Last one on the list here, the polar ice. So polar ice, this is area on the land that is uh, pretty much covered in ice or snow year round. So it doesn't matter what the season is, um, the ice just persists. So that's polar ice.